The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. So one day, Rav Ari Levine hears a pounding at his door in the middle of the night. And when Rav Ari Levine heard a pounding at his door in the middle of the night, he knew that it could mean any one of some possibilities. Because he lived a very rich life. It could be a British officials informing him someone about to be executed, and he was being summoned to read the prisoner his last rites, or final words of Chizik. It could have been the medical personnel from the leper's hospital, from the Metzoyer's hospital that he visited all the time, to try to get him to calm a patient down. It could have been a local militia commander asking the Rav positively identify or document Nebuch, someone that was just killed, to ensure that his wife shouldn't remain in Aguna. It could have been a desperate mother pleading for food for her crying children whose hunger pains wouldn't allow either they or her to fall asleep. The Rebbe Arya was busy a whole day with Chesed. He used to spend his nights writing this Chidush on Mamash Nais. Rebbe Arya put his pen down, and the middle of the nights was reserved for him to write his Chidush on Mamash Nais. This was really the middle of the night, and then pound there's a knock on the door. Now, uh, here several people were there, and they were begging the Rav, and we need your advice, because there's a situation, and no, it could not wait till the morning. So what's going on? He said there's a local mafia guy, you know, Mishaluni, that is moving quickly from one kiosk to the other in a truck, in a pickup truck, in a Machni Yehuda market. And he was engaged in transferring its contents, which included dwindling wartime life staples in this pickup truck. He's stealing from one truck to the other. And I said he was arrested. What did I do? All I did is I started shopping early. Yeah, before the store was open. Right? <laughs> now, these people had no phone to summon the police. And the local watchman who knew of what kind of reputation this Ganev had, had a very shvacha appetite to approach him. And the locals felt, that, as it is, they're starving to death. If he's emptying out their shells, or whatever life staples there were, they came to consult the Rav, what's going to be? So they said, what do we do? Should we summon up enough courage and gang up and together pounce on him? But our wives pleaded with us that we don't, that we don't risk our lives, that we don't do it. And they, another idea that somebody brought up was, should they hire another gangster they knew who worked nights to stop him? Yeah. And what if that other gangster is going to make off with the stolen goods? Or maybe they just resign to themselves to the loss. They're dying of hunger anyway. The Rav's answer was straight to the point. He said, none of the above. The Rav flew out of his apartment and ignoring the warnings of the delegation, he ran over a beeline to personally engage the perpetrator. And... Rabbi had a policy, ask questions first and shoot later. He raced over to the getaway vehicle, and the cl- this cold-blooded thief, he knew people are starving to death, was about to enter the cab of his overladen pickup truck, somewhat taken aback to see Rabbi Arye approaching. Rabbi Arye grabbed both of his hands, and he revealed them, a with the that it says in the Torah you shouldn't steal. And Rabbi Arye said it with such straightforwardness and determination and you would think he was telling him some word the choice. Wow, wow. Holy signal. No, holy signal. Really? And the Rav said, especially during these times, it's not just stealing money, it's life. And I know you're desperate, Rabbi Aaron said to him. He validated his. But these people who own these kiosks, and the women and the children who count on them, they're dwindling supplies on the shelves. Their, their lives depend on it. Now, anyone else that would try to stop the thief that way, okay, would have been coughing from the exhaust of the pickup truck. But the thief knew Rabbi Aryeh, and Rabbi Aryeh knew the thief, and as a result, this, this bandit, midnight bandit, your Shalayan midnight bandit, had only one question. He had a taina. What was his taina? I spent the whole night loading up my truck. What can I do now? So what's the problem, answered Rabbi Aryeh? The same hands that took the merchandise out of the stores can put them right back. The same truck that rounded up the schayro can deliver it right where it came from. He said, ah, but the Rav said, you should know. Putting it back is going to be only half the work because I'm going to help you. Yeah, but the police could arrive any minute. I'll be caught red-handed. As long as I am here, said Rav Aryeh, the police won't arrest you. Aryeh responded calmly. Rav Aryeh was the chief of police's closest confidant, so that was not an empty promise. So when the sun rose over Machna Yehuda, next morning, Rav Aryeh and the former Ganef had just uh, put the last bundle of socks back in its place. Right? So by now, the crowd had gathered, and Rabbi Arya took the opportunity of reciting a very heartfelt Misha Beirach. Misha Beirach, Misha Yivarech, this year woke up in the wee hours of morning, 
to fulfill the mitzvah of a Heshav as a Right? Now, I, I'm telling you, Rabbi Aaron's method of what to do with a criminal in the middle of the night is not standard procedure that they teach in the police academy or in the FBI. But Rav Arya, he didn't build hospitals, he didn't curse, he didn't rub sores, he didn't fix the road, fix the problem. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.